the second to last game of the regular season almost kind of feels like opening night all over again. Yes, Paige is back as the seventh ranked Yukon Huskies take on the St. John's Red Storm. Our Yukon women's broadcast on SNY brought to you by Chick fil A Tri States. And hi, everybody, from XL Center with Megan Como. I'm Alan Bestwick. Yes, definitely some excitement in the air tonight with Paige Becker's return to the lineup. It's been since December 5th, the end of the Notre Dame game when she was injured, since we've seen Paige on the floor. Kind of feels like we need to remind everybody a little bit about what she does for this team. Well, my gosh, she does so much for this team. And you know what? The, the fascinating thing to me is, I mean, she is just such a threat to score. Getting to the basket quickly. She reads defenses so well. She also plays some defense. <laughs> Swatting that shot away. She's a tremendous teammate. Finds, you know, the impossible pass. She makes it look easy. She does everything. But what, even aside from all of her stats and what she brings, this kid is a great teammate, wants to be a great teammate, and wants everyone on this team to flourish not just herself she's incredibly unselfish and just the buzz of around the team with her being back today and shoot around it was palpable what will this night be like for Paige earlier today at shoot around Maria Marino asked her Paige, can you sum up the journey that you've been on and the emotions now that you're actually coming back to the court it's been challenging, hard, just seeing, having to watch the team not being able to play and help them in practice and in games, um, all the rehab, and it's been a mental challenge for sure, a physical challenge as well, but I'm just so excited, and I don't think words can explain how excited I am to be out there. You've seen this team evolve. How do you fit back in, and what's the ceiling for what you can achieve? Uh, I mean, the way we've adjusted and the way we've handled adversity, um, it's made us a really strong team and a better team. And I think, obviously, injuries are the worst, but it's made us strong and it's made us better and made individuals step up. So I'm just excited to join in and help wherever I can. Well, Paige Beckers is still the leading scorer in points per game for UConn. And with two games left before March begins, Husky fans are sure excited to see her back. Opponents? Well, maybe not so much. Tonight's opponent is St. John's. UConn and St. John's tip off next. Paige Beckers is back, is in uniform, will play tonight, though she is not in the starting lineup for UConn. We will see her, no doubt, sometime in the first quarter, though, at our starting lineups tonight are presented by Subaru of New England. It's the same starting five that we saw Wednesday night against Marquette with Newell, Williams, Fudd, Edwards, and Nelson Adota. The starting five for St. John's tonight includes one junior, three seniors, and one grad transfer. Very experienced team, a very high scoring team for St. John's. That's the thing. But the Huskies uh, have been very good on defense, and they've been successful at locking teams like that down this season. UConn wins the tip. Fans on their feet. Huskies in the home lights, and here we go at XL Center. Tristan Williams drives under, up, and in. Nice aggressive take to start things off here for Kristen Williams. And Lonnie Correa, too, is the leading scorer for St. John's. This is Kemri Clegg driving on Mule. Nicely cut off. Good pass inside to Correa. Ball on the floor, and it's retrieved by Olivia Nelson Adota. AZ5 gets the nice pass from Nelson Adota, and the points for UConn. Pretty pass from Nelson Adota, and how about that home court roll? Yeah. <laughs> Take every one of those you can get. Here is Camry Clegg handling the ball for the Red Storm. Kadeja Bailey, 30. Experienced, quick, aggressive, trying to take it to the rim like this. Aliyah Edwards reads it and takes the ball away. What help defense there by Edwards. Wow. Mule left open for three. And this is a nightmare for St. John's. For UConn to, to hit offensively like they have early, 
difficult to climb out of that hole. Seven nothing for UConn before St. John's has gotten its second shot of the game off. They'll call it travel on Correa. So Gino Ariema coaching against St. John's. He has all 45 of UConn's wins against the Red Storm on his resume. Joe Tartamella in his 10th season heading up the St. John's program. Winning record, as you see, 58% win percentage. Great guy to talk to. He's very candid about his team and what they need to do tonight to try and win. There's AZ Flood for three. Well, he's the all-time winningest coach at St. John's. And he needs a timeout right now to stop the bleeding. What a start for the Huskies, much to the appreciation of this loud crowd here in Hartford. 10-0 UConn. Perfect start for the Huskies, 10-0 in less than two minutes of time. And Maria Marino's first in-game update is brought to you by Cadillac. Maria? Thanks, Alan. I think it's safe to say Paige Becker's teammates are excited to have her back. But I wanted to revisit something that she spoke to me about earlier, and that is the physical versus mental challenge of returning to play. She told me the checkup with her doctor was more about the mental part, getting confirmation that her knee is totally healed, yes, but so that she doesn't have to think twice about it. She could just play with confidence, and she heard what she needed to from Dr. Robert Arciero of UConn Health, and that's why she was a go today. See Paige's debut here at whatever point Gino decides to check her in. Meantime, St. John's trying to get on the board here. This is Judith Drake into the ball game, wearing number one. Feeds Correa. Somehow gets that up to the rim. And it misses Olivia Nelson to go to with the rebound. You're talking uh, during the timeout with me about the Paige effect already, maybe, on this UConn yeah, team? I mean, she gives him so much confidence there. Edwards with a tough finish in the lane. You know, in the practice at shoot around today, there was a different kind of energy. Yeah. She gives them confidence. It's just amazing to see the way they have come out and been perfect from the floor. Literally, perfect. Haven't missed a shot yet. Five of five from the floor, two of two from three for the Huskies. Drake off the people's screen, now screen people's rolls, but misses the shot. That was a great pass, too. I think she caught Nika Mule flashing her way out of the corner of an eye. Here's Fudd. She'll stop. Edwards feeds a cutting Kristen Williams, knocked away from her, but off Williams' hands. On their side, it's on her, yeah, okay. and it's off St. John's. And Nelson Adota was working hard in that low post, and he didn't find her. They lost Kristen Williams, did St. John's, and she'll score the bucket. Yeah, lack of communication defensively for St. John's. And something that Joe Tardinella stressed this morning when we watched his team shoot around. He told them, you must communicate on defense. They will find the hole you lead them. Here's Mule. Feeds Edwards. Missed. First missed shot of the game for the Huskies. Figures it was a layup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kadeja Bailey knocked away by Mule. Fudd will come up with a loose ball as both bodies hit the floor. Edwards out ahead of the field. And we get called for the travel. Nika Mule still sorting things out behind the play after getting tangled up with Kadeja Bailey. How about Mule's active hands? She has been such a pest to St. John's this quarter thus far. Daniel Patterson, three into the ball game for St. John's for Daniel Cosgrove. And so a 14-0 run by the Huskies to start this game. There's Drake. Uh, Patterson. Patterson, the Indiana transfer. Shot clock at 10. Runs right into Nelson Adota. Still three on the shot clock. Won't have any place to go. Time violation. Husky defense rising to the occasion. And it's, it's tremendous team defense as well. Nice help from Nelson Adota. Nika Mule calling out the play as the Huskies end of the front court. And Nelson Adota. Raven Peoples on her. Mule. Fudd behind the Nelson Adota screen, lets it fly, and it's good from three. And she hesitated for a second. Yeah, that's not her usually. Yeah, she's just catch, 
and shoot. 17 nothing. Look at Fudd working to stay with Kadeja Bailey. Keep the ball trapped in the hands of Peoples. Now Patterson comes to get it, defended by Aaliyah Edwards. <laughs> Bailey cut off, but finds with a nice pass Peoples underneath to get the Red Storm their first points of the ball game. This, is a, this St. John's team can score. Average in 74 a game. Williams aggressively to the rim, gets blocked. Here's Bailey on the run out. Azy Fudd right with her to contest the shot. Peoples with the offensive glass, missed her putback. And Mule will slow it down. Smart play by Mule. Edwards posts up, gets away from Peoples. What a great use of her body, Aaliyah Edwards. And a good pass. That worry you here, team. sorry Meg, is Paige Beckers heading to the scorer's table to check in. Interesting that she's coming in with three other players. Yep. Westbrook, Ducharme, and Juhas as the bucket goes there for Unique Drake for St. John's. Ball knocked away out of bounds. It'll be UConn's ball and bring us to a timeout. play for this second pair pairing of players to get started with so Paige is back less than four minutes to play in quarter number one he's playing a little zone here great guarded by you Hoss. Patterson five to shoot kicks to Drake Drives around Juhas, but Fudd was right there to block it. And a tied up ball, possession arrow. It will stay with St. John's. Look at the great help, AZ Fudd coming down to stop the ball. Nice job keeping her hands in the air. You see her look, the look on her face is like, wait a minute, you're gonna call a foul? Oh, and then the look of relief when it was a jump ball. Only one to shoot, Correa gets it in on the inbound play. Sensational play by Correa. Charm lets it fly in three, no, too strong. Juhas boxed out by Peoples. Drake again has it blocked. Fudd first, then Juhas. Beckers runs. The pass to Westbrook. Good retreat on defense. She feeds Fudd. That goes for three. Four of five from three, 10 of 13 from the floor in this first quarter. They've not shot this well all year. Patterson gets that to go for two. Daniel Patterson, the grad student, transfer from Indiana. So inside of two minutes to go in quarter number one. Yuha sets the screen, Fudd lets it go. I've been so impressed with Fudd off the dribble, the way she's been able to score. Not just a standing three-point shooter. And she and Dorothy Yuha seem to have developed a really good chemistry. And there's Patterson from the corner. No, Beckers with the rebound. Fudd missed. Drake cut off by Westbrook. Defense! 
Kadeja Bailey now, guarded by Beckers. Works off the people's screen. Newhouse was there for the double team and a thrown away ball. Hands ready, feet ready, quick release. Great screen from Juhas. Fudd used it perfectly, finding so many different ways to be impactful. So, AZ Fudd and Nika Mule go to the bench for this final moment of the first quarter. Fudd already with 13 points. Did you know some Adota back in the ballgame? Caroline Ducharme with a good read, cut off nicely by Peoples. Nelson Adota drives, blocked. Good defensive stance there by Raven Peoples, 20, the senior from Detroit. That was well defended, and I and I thought Nelson Adota went in there with a little bit of hesitancy. You, have to, you gotta go in there strong. Ten to shoot here for UConn. 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Juhas sees the opening, tried to shovel it to Nelson Adota. She takes it away from Peoples and gets the bucket. A bit fortunate there. Juhas almost too unselfish. She had the wide open lane. 20 point UConn lead. Drake. No, Nelson Adota with the box out. Five seconds to go. Beckers looks at the timer. Has it knocked out of her hands? We'll get the shot away. And it goes to end the first quarter. And the celebration with the student section to top it all off as Paige Beckers gets her first points since December 5th. Had it knocked away, recovered, nothing but that. Back live at the XL Center, our UConn Fan Choice Poll tonight, presented by Duncan. We want you to tell us how far you think this UConn squad can go this March. Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four, National Championship game. Go to sny.tv slash vote game and cast your vote. Well, I know a lot of the attention tonight is on Paige Beckers, but the star of this game so far has been the freshman AZ Fudd. Well, again, I do think there's some confidence admitting around this team with the return of Beckers, but outstanding cut there from Fudd. I mean, she does such a good job of getting her feet and her hands and her shoulders square, using the screen from Nelson Adota perfectly. She's a really smart basketball player, the way she can get herself open. And uh, single-handedly has outscored St. John's in this uh, first quarter and made a couple of really great defensive plays, did AZ Fudd, uh, as a part of her first quarter effort also. So we go to the second here in Hartford with Megan Como and Maria Marino. Alan Bestwick, glad you've joined us tonight. If you're a UConn fan, you should be having fun, I would think. So here's Westbrook, Beckers, Juhas. Edwards and Ducharme on the floor, shot missed. Edwards with the offensive glass and puts it back in. That was 6-3, Aaliyah Edwards rebounding over the top of 5-5, Camry Clegg. Melani Correa drives, Becker's got a hand on the ball and they're gonna call a foul. It's gonna be on Westbrook for a push. That'll be her first. Not great communication between Ducharme and Westbrook. Drake floats it in. Daniel Castro, 13, back in the game. Correa with the pull-up. No. And nothing but white jerseys under the rim. Muha sets the screen for Beckers, then takes the ball on the roll. Duchar. Too strong. Juhas taps it out, but right to Correa. Two points in the game for Leilani Correa. She averages 17.8. Long range, no. St. John's just 4 of 15 in this game from the floor. 27%. Huskies at 67%. Here is Avina Westbrook, who was terrific against Marquette on Wednesday night. Leah Edwards takes the pass from Beckers. 
outstanding pass off the pick and roll. Look at that smile on number five's face. Is she having a ball or what? No one has more fun playing this game than Paige Beckers, particularly today when she didn't play for so long. Got a whistle and a foul. Good timing. And then the quick screen and you see the roll. Just always have your hands ready when she's got the ball in her hands because she'll find you. So Beckers goes to the bench after five minutes on court. Mule comes back in. Foul was on Caroline Ducharme. And that shot flies from Cosgrove and is short. Edwards drives on Cosgrove. Kick to Westbrook. Ducharme tries to cut, gets away from Correa, and gets it in. Such a great play by Ducharme. The freshman so so smart and savvy running to open spots on the floor. Remember the game down in Queens against St. John's in January. Caroline Ducharme went off with a career-high 28 points. There's another turnover. Westbrook fires ahead to running Ducharme. Who gets the bucket? What a pass from Westbrook. And that all started with AC Fudd in the steal. to eight huskies by 30 with seven to go in the second quarter there's clegg driving on mule kicks to correa for three that shot too strong dorothy uhas cut off she's westbrook making herself available Nice pass back to Leah Edwards and gets it. Everything is going right for Yukon on the offensive end. Here's Danielle Patterson. That shot not long enough. Rebound by Avina Westbrook. Remember Wednesday night against Marquette, Yukon's defense limited the Golden Eagles to just 14 points in the first half. Patterson knocks that pass toward Juhas away. It'll be UConn ball, 19 to shoot. They're locked in defensively. The smart play there by Nika Mule to knock that ball away. And what a pass, threading the needle to the streaking Ducharme from Westbrook. Ducharme from the corner, way over everything. Ball. Booted away from Nika Mule, and that's going to be kicked out of bounds by Kristen Williams, who is back in the ball game. So, Juhas and Westbrook went to the bench on that last time out, and now AZ Fudd comes in for Ducharme. So it'll be Mule, Williams, Fudd, Nelson Adota, and Edwards. What a luxury that Gino <laughs> can actually make substitutions. They had so many injuries and players out for some long stretches this season. He didn't have subs for a long time. You know, it was kind of stark watching the, the shoot-around today from 1, one to 3 o'clock here at XL Center. First of all, it was very crisp. Probably one of the more crisp, efficient practices we've seen on game day for the Huskies this year. As uh, Bailey gets the ball back out of trouble, now coming down to 10 to shoot for St. John's. Crossgrove? No. And Edwards with the rebound. To finish that point, Gino ran through, what, about like eight or nine different lineup combos at different times on the floor? It was fascinating. Edwards blocked. Yeah, it's nice. He has some choices now. You know? Here's Clegg spinning into the path of Nelson Adota. Fudd. Into Nelson Adota. Too, too tall. Couldn't handle it. Raven, Raven Peoples not yielding any ground to let Nelson to go to make that turn. Coming up on halfway through quarter number two here in Hartford. If you just joined us, you have missed a lot. Nelson to will tip that away out of bounds. It'll be the Red Storm ball with 10 to shoot. UConn opened the game with a 10-0 run. Paige Beckers came in. Things didn't slow down at all. Huskies have shot 67%. And now Dorothy Juhas back into the ballgame for Aliyah Edwards. Here's Kadeja Bailey. 
That'll go out of bounds off St. John's. It'll be UConn's ball after the timeout. 4.59 to go, quarter number two. What a show it's been for the home fans tonight. Largest lead of the ball game, 32 UConn over St. John's here at XL Center in Hartford. A happy Friday night in downtown. And uh, Como's Court Vision now, brought to you by Yale New Haven Health. What you have for us, Meg? Well, easy foot, okay, right here. We know she's an outstanding three-point shooter, but watch the way she moves without the ball here. They fake the handoff, and then she feels her defender trailing her, cuts hard. Nelson Adota finds her. Terrific execution. Now here is Fudd on the defensive end. Watch how she stays in her stance. Hands up. Got her hands out, right? Sees the ball. Now stepping in to knock that pass away. Really good help defense. Clogging up the lane. Smart, smart basketball player. She's only a freshman. Yeah. Five of six from the floor. Three of four from three. And uh, they do this thing plus minus the score when you're on the floor. AZ Fudd is a plus 18 tonight so far. And we're just getting to the second half of the second quarter. Fudd out there with Nelson Adota, Juhas, Mule, and Williams. Juhas for three. Back on. St. John's get the score in the second quarter. Major Bailey, defended by Fudd. Here's Peoples. Tries to spin, Nelson Adota there, got the ball. Knocked out of bounds. And we saved by Juhas. Tristan Williams all the way at the other end. That's the kick at the Fudd. Nelson Adota all the way out for three, and it goes. <laughs> Not sure that's what she intended. Fight <laughs> physics, actually. It's like gonna stick on the back <laughs> of the rim up against the backboard for a second till it finally rolled in. Blocked underneath. Again. You know, the all hands are active. The help defense. Has been tremendous. Smart play there by Kristen Williams. Already six blocks in the ballgame for the Huskies. Won't block that one. Leilani Correa. Acrobatically to the rim. First points of the second quarter for St. John's. Mules pass to a cutting Juhas. A little air net. Is that Bob Euclid used to say? A bit too high. St. John's 0 for 7 from 3 in this game. Tremendous defense there by Fudd. Mule on Clegg. Clegg will draw the foul with the backhand overhead toss at the rim. Maria Marino was listening in on that last UConn huddle. What do you tell your team when you're up 30 or so points? Well, Gino <laughs> looked at Chris Daly and said, how much time do we have? She said five minutes. He said, OK, let's not get any fouls in five minutes. Let's try to play as hard as we can without fouling. Obviously, um, that goal was, was not achieved. <laughs> well, no, it was not. Nika Mule called for the foul there. And quite fitting that it was Nika yeah, Mule. Yeah, imagine that, right? So here is Cameron Clegg, the grad, grad student from Westland, Michigan. Gets that to go. And Aaliyah Edwards will come into the ball game for UConn in favor of Dorothy Juhas, or in place of, I should say. Kristen Williams. She ran over three quarters of the court to get that three-pointer. She had a tracker on that that left the line behind her on the court. It looked like a bumblebee's flight. Around, through, over, under, and out. Vector's back to the scorer's table to check back in. 
Here's Bailey driving on FUD. Gets that to go over the top of Nelson Adota. Hit the floor hard, but up quickly. Kadeja Bailey, That's, terrific yeah, play. Tough take by Bailey. Good finish. Kristen Williams left alone for three. No. Only Edwards with the offensive glass on the putback. Another great offensive rebound by Edwards and putback. What a dominating presence she is in that low post. Having a terrific game. Nelson Adota with the quick hands on Peoples. Now Correa with the ball in her hands. Two minutes to go, second quarter. Ten to shoot for St. John's. That'll be UConn's ball. The pass inbound for Raven Peoples went by. And so here comes Paige Beckers into the ball game for a second time. Caroline Ducharme also in. Maybe Nelson Dota goes to the bench. UConn keeps this pace up in the game. They will break their season's high in scoring, which was in the very opener of the season. And this Kristen Williams offensive rebound. Gets fouled going back up. Rebound from Kristen Williams. Yikes. Just playing with a different energy, a different purpose this Intensity, team this right? evening. Yeah. yeah. Foul on Sarah Sabrecki, the sophomore from Indiana. So Kristen Williams, the senior, goes to the line to shoot free throws here. Already seven points in the game. And counting. Went over 1,700 career points last Sunday against Georgetown. Gets one of two there for UConn. Leah yeah, Edwards hits the floor, but will get called for the foul. I thought that was a late whistle, too. There are more than a few highlights for Gary Apple and Kara Walters to have a look at from this first half on the UConn Women's Basketball Halftime Show, presented by Duncan, coming up in just a little bit. As uh, the Huskies have put on maybe one of their best performances of the season in terms of both ends of the floor all the way through the half. That's unique Drake. Shot well short. Leah Edwards there to take it in. Pass kind of telegraphed and Raven Peoples was able to rock it away from Leah Edwards. A minute to go. St. John 6 of 25 in this first half. Old 8 from outside. There's one from outside that finally goes. You need, uh, excuse me, that's Kadeja Bailey with the three pointer. St. John's a 34% three point shooting team normally, but well below that tonight. Packers off the Edward screen, drives. High glass and in. Little plays like that are good for Becker's confidence to jump and extend and land and realize her knee's okay. That's This is where it's all mental. Less than 10 seconds to go in this first half. <laughs> Bailey will let it fly for three and get it. And that will be how the first half ends for St. John's with them finally dropping a couple of threes, but the entire story of this first half was UConn, offensive end of the floor and defensive end of the floor, as they hold St. John's to just 19 points, and they put up 51 in the first half, shooting 22 of 34, and how about this, 55% from outside, 6 of 11 for the Huskies. So the halftime score again is UConn 51, and St. John's 19 as the leading scorer in the ball game is AZ Fudd, the freshman, who is five of six from the floor and three of four from outside. Hey, Gino. Yeah. Gosh, uh, you guys played an outstanding half of basketball. You've got your whole team back now for the first time. Did you feel a different energy with Becker's back? I think so. I mean, uh, <clears throat> um, 
you know, we haven't been, um, even when we were in the Bahamas to start the season, uh, you know, we weren't 100 percent. So um, if you want to say that everybody's 100 percent now, yeah, this is the first time. And, um, you know, the kids are playing really, really hard. You know, I think they they understand that uh, everybody's going to play. If, if you're, you know, if you're productive during your minutes, you're going to get in. So everybody's trying to make the most of the minutes that they get. And, um, you know, I don't know that you could have a better first half than, you know, what we just had. Well, did Paige play as you expected she would play? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you haven't played in, uh, you know, in a couple months, you're not just going to be able – and you haven't practiced. So, um, you know, I just wanted her to get up and down, get her feet wet, touch the ball, you know, and, and do a couple things. And, and she's done exactly what, you know, I hoped it, she would do, you know, not too much and not too little. The cheering with the student section I thought was a great touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, good luck second half. Right. Thanks. The Hall of Famer Gino Oriema as his squad is up by 36 on St. John's at halftime. Paige Becker's seven minutes, three shots, made two of them, including that one right there to light the audience up. Fun night here at the XL Center in downtown Hartford as UConn is out to a 32-point lead on St. John's. Paige Becker's in her return. And uh, all of these Huskies playing really well through two quarters of this one. With Megan Kumo, I'm Alan Bestwick. This almost looks like a team a, a quarter of a step up from the one we saw play really well even like the last four games yeah this is like the postseason yeah. UConn team I, I haven't seen that this particular group play this well all season long and it's the right time to be hitting their stride yeah the page effect <laughs> I I think so yeah. I mean I think just her being back gives this team so much confidence and more belief in themselves they learn so much in her absence how about that great curl by Fudd outstanding pass from Nelson Adota and Fudd is just so good at using screens and getting herself open and you can't say enough about what Aaliyah Edwards has done six of eight from the floor using her body well the nice pass from Yule the way she moves without the ball and establishes establishes position there in that low post another good pass from Nelson Adota just awesome, awesome first half of really, ball for the Gino Huskies. Oriema, you know, he was pretty happy with the interview at halftime, and he's got to feel really good about the way his team is coming together as they approach March. So a freshman and a sophomore together scored 25 to St. John's 19, and uh, you saw some of those numbers for UConn with the assists, the turnovers, um, you know, little things that went unnoticed in that first half, like Avina Westbrook with five assists, <laughs> and really just a complete effort on both ends of the floor for yeah, UConn. And we didn't even talk about their defense on point. <laughs> <laughs> Aliyah Edwards. Edwards now with 14 points, six rebounds, two assists, and that was her first steal to go with one block also. What a line. There's Nika Mule jumping in. That'll be a tied up ball. It'll go to UConn. Just active hands, hands in the passing lane, good anticipation. Nice job by Edwards, just stepping in and then gets to finish on the other end. St. John's only averages just under 15 turnovers a game this season. And that was just their 12th. Yeah, UConn has a way of doing that to people. There's Nelson Adota. Kristen Williams cuts. Good pass, good bucket. Standing cut from Williams, and, and what a what a pass from Nelson Adota. Great energy from the senior Kristen Williams tonight. Camry Clegg lets it go, and she will get fouled by Mika Mule, and the bucket will count. I'm trying to decide whose scowl is deeper at this, Nika's or Gino's. <laughs> So here is Camry Clegg, team leader in assists and three-point shooting. 
had a huge game at Providence last Sunday in the Red Storm win. Career high, 23 points. And that's the extra there. Miscommunication. And then thrown away ball. Mule attempting to connect with Kristen Williams. <laughs> Reyes slips, ball batted away, Edwards saves it, but it goes to Costro. Could reset the shot clock is the signal from the officials, but it didn't get reset until they stopped play. Then it got reset, and so it'll be 20 to shoot for the Red Storm. Well, I wonder what Joe Tardamella said to his team at halftime, but I know a big emphasis when we spoke with him this morning was he just wanted his team to play hard yeah, for 40 minutes. Yeah, just keep competing. Because you don't want this effort to bleed over into their game on Sunday. All right, they go to Marquette from here, and they're fighting to stay in seventh place. As far as the bracket's concerned for the Big East Championship, Clegg fell down. She's down behind the play, now gets back up. Here comes Kristen Williams to flood. The quick release, and the three. Fifty-eight twenty-two. <laughs> Bailey drives on Nelson Adota, throws it off, and they're going to call a foul on Nelson Adota on that one. Fudd does such a good job of getting wide. So difficult for the defense who, when you run back, in a fast break opportunity. The defense wants to run back and get in the lane and clog it up so you don't give up a layup. It's so difficult to, to stop that and then get out and try to stop the three. So here's Kadeja Bailey shooting free throws for St. John's. Her 112th game for the Red Storm. It's an incredible number. And gets one of two there. A foul called on Kristen Williams as she nudged aside Leilani Correa. So that'll be Kristen's first. So if uh, if the goal was to not commit a foul in this quarter, that's fallen by the wayside quickly too. Yeah, different energy this quarter, isn't it? This, this yeah. second half. Mule gets a hand on the pass. Williams will drive. And it knocked away or lost it out of bounds. And a turnover by UConn. So a couple empty possessions here for the Huskies. That These are plays, though, that even though UConn is up big, these are the things that frustrate Gino Oriema because they are mental mistakes that you can't afford to make at this time of year. And St. John's is 11-16. Uh, and 16. Correa gets uh, that off the back iron. Good jump by Nelson Adota to corral the rebound. Fudd ahead to Edwards. What a pass from Fudd. A lot of smiles yes. tonight. Freshman and a sophomore leading the way. Huskies leading really up. Zone defense going. Bailey gets it blocked by Nelson Adota, but it will go out of bounds. No, it'll be UConn's as well. All right, I thought that went off of Nelson Adota. Looking up the floor, perfect pass, and great finish by Edwards. Avina Westbrook into the ball game for Nika Mule now. Mentioned Westbrook with those five assists in the first half. Here's Fudd. Used the screen from Edwards perfectly. Nineteen points for AZ Fudd. She's only missed one shot in the ball game. Nineteen points in nineteen minutes. Yes. Yeah. 
pretty good average. You know what you're saying? Yeah, pretty efficient. Yep. And a rebound there. Westbrook will set the half court. Fudd for three. Off the back iron. Correa will get the rebound before Edwards could get there. Bailey, no. Be to Westbrook with the rebound. Way ahead, trying to get Kristen Williams running. Bailey got back to intercept. Patterson pulls up. And that's going to go off of AZ Foot out of bounds. It will be St. John's ball. UConn football tickets are on sale now. Join Coach Jim Moore and the Huskies as they take on the 2022 home schedule featuring Syracuse, Boston College, and more. Purchase your tickets at UConnHuskies.com. Caroline Ducharme and Dorky Juhas into the ballgame for UConn. Fudd and Edwards go to the bench. And St. John's will inbound the ball with a 20-second shot clock. Bailey drives, cut off. Drake. No, and Juhas with the rebound. St. John's shooting just 27% in the ballgame. 9 of 33. A little wrestling going on in the paint, and they're going to call Emma Nolan of St. John's for a foul. As she and Olivia Nelson Adota fought for position. 63 to 23, UConn halfway through the third quarter. Halfway through the third quarter here at XL Center, Paige Beckers comes back into the ball game with Avina Westbrook, Dorka Juhas, Kristen Williams, and Caroline Ducharme. Beckers played seven minutes and 13 seconds in the first half. Two of three from the floor in that one. Off the Juhas screen, all the way to the rim. Another good confidence booster for Paige, knowing that her knee is not going to give out when she goes up for a shot like that. Beckers out here on the point of the defensive setup. Defending unique Drake. 33 is Katie Burton, a freshman for St. John's into the ball game. Fishers, Indiana. Juhas got a hand on it. Westbrook finds Beckers, finds Juhas. Knocked away. A no call of travel before the ball was stripped. And a turnover by the Huskies. Good to see Dorky Juhas back out on the floor. Took that forearm to the face at the end of the Marquette game on Wednesday. Got some stitches inside her uh, lip. Yeah, her bottom lip got three stitches. She's tough, though. She's out here playing. You bet. Here's Bailey. Working on Deshaun. Burton. Cut off by Williams. Five to shoot for St. John's. <laughs> kind of a desperation three heaved up there at the end of the shot clock. Does not go. And the Huskies will pick up possession at 65-23. The kick. Dushar. No. Fight for the rebound. Juhas can't come down with it. Here comes Burton driving into two Husky defenders. Kristen Williams with the block. I thought the block and then she picked up the loose ball. Look at that ball movement. Four players touch the ball within 10 feet of the basket. Westbrook catches St. John sleeping and gets the steal. Dusharm gets the bucket. What an unselfish play by Avina Westbrook. Outstanding. An 11 0 run over the last four minutes and 18 seconds for the Huskies. You heard the saying plenty defense into offense. Kristen Williams, and then the ball moves quickly. One, two, three. 
four, and in for two. Huskies are having fun tonight. Well, three Huskies in double figures in this ball game, led by AZ Fudd, leads all scorers in the ball game with 19 points, and we're not even to the end of the third quarter. And Gino just talked talked about executing, right? So here, AZ Fudd is up here in the corner. Watch this offensive play. Nice back cut. Okay, not open. Now the ball comes up to the side. Now watch here, right here. The two screens, a double screen set for Fudd. She's over here in the wing. Wide open, terrific screens by Kristen Williams and Aaliyah Edwards to get her wide open. Seven of nine from the floor, five of seven from three for Fudd. Look at the assists and the made field goals comparing the two teams in this one. So on this 11-0 run for the Huskies continues here after the timeout. Clegg. And it climbs off the rim. Avina Westbrook has equaled her season high in assists in this one already. Tied up ball in the fight for the rebound. How about Juhas determined to come away with that? <laughs> Impressive effort by Juhas. Going in there to rip that offensive rebound down. But the tied up ball on the possession arrow will give it to St. John's. So 0 for their last nine from the floor by the Red Storm. And almost another turnover there. Speckers went for the steal. As Burton drives. Juhas there. Both hands straight up and gets the block. Williams from Westbrook for three. A lot of smiles out there tonight. That goes from outside for Clegg. Much needed three for Clegg in the Red Storm. It's just the third made three on 16 attempts. Both teams have attempted 16 three-point shots. St. John's has made three, UConn's made nine. That will be Juhas. It rings around and goes for two. Down to a minute to go in this third quarter here at Hartford. Bailey drives. And they're going to call a foul on Ducharme. That'll be her second. A lot of different personnel groupings in there tonight. Anything strike your eye about any particular combination? You know, I, I don't know, but you know, so many of the groups. <laughs> These combinations have worked. You know, UConn has played exceptional basketball here tonight. It's hard to say what group was better. Two Red Storm players collide in the aftermath. Beckers gets the feed and the score. Started with Westbrook, picked up by Juhas, fed ahead. Patterson inside to Bailey. Ducharme couldn't get there, but the shot was missed. Peoples gets the rebound. St. John's will get another try. Here's Clegg. Drives on Williams, and that's going to be a foul called on the floor on Kristen Williams. Take it to the rim. Brought to you by Duncan. Huskies really did take it to the rim here. Look at this. I tell you, that was just a perfect fast break execution the bounce pass from Juhas to the streaking Becker Beckers well Paige Beckers has been on the floor for 12 minutes four of five from the floor hasn't attempted a three-point shot yet and here's Camry Clegg now for St. John's at the free throw strike What that lobbying's going on over there for. Uh, more, more PT. All right, well. well she's a coach on the floor. Yes. And, and that's one of the many things that he appreciates about her. 
So every Husky that's played in the game tonight has scored, except Avina Westbrook, but I say that with this. Avina has now a new season high in assists at eight. Eight yeah. assists, three rebounds. She's playing outstanding basketball yeah. in these last stretch of games. Bouchard with a nice move. Way to get the defender up in the air and then the step through. And time expires on quarter number three. Quarter that started out a little slow out of the locker room, but then exploded as the Huskies went on an 11-0 run. Outscore the Johnnies 27-9 in the third. Caroline Ducharme capping it off. Back at XL Center, let's check out our UConn Fan Choice poll presented by Duncan. Tonight we asked you how far you think this UConn team will go this March. Well, let's see. With the return of Paige Beckers and the way that the Huskies have played tonight, I'm not exactly shocked at the outcome. <laughs> Just saying. Not shocked at all. Yep. And our game reset is presented by Chick-fil-A Tri-State. So, yes, that is the correct score. <laughs> the Huskies by 50 at the end of three. Leilani Correa, the leading scorer for St. John's, who normally gets about 18 a game, held to four. AZ Fudd leading all scorers in this one. Let's check in with Maria Marino. Thanks, Alan. When assistant coach Morgan Valley came on staff, she told me her impression of Paige Beckers was that she's an amazing kid who loves her teammates, loves coach, and loves the game. She also said she calls her a mix between, oh, I don't know, Diana Tarazi and Sue Bird with her mentality, that she's a little bit nicer than D, a little bit edgier than Sue, but extremely smart and extremely talented. Quite the compliment. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> nicer than D. That's fun. You know, Tarazi watches some of these games. I wonder if she heard that one. If she heard that one, you'll be hearing from her shortly. Yes. <laughs> so here we are at the start of the fourth. Adina Westbrook with the ball. Mika Mule, Olivia Nelson Adota, Caroline Ducharme, and Kristen Williams on the court with her for UConn. Ten to shoot now. Nelson Adota, the big steps, the bucket, and the foul. She's in a different zone right now, too, Nelson Adota. I thought she played outstanding Wednesday against Marquette. Nice patience. And then big step to get past the defender. In that case, the only choice the defense has is to foul. Had a nice conversation with Nelson Adota after the ball game the other night as she waited to go into the press room. And she just she said her mindset has changed completely, and it's just focus on the now. Be in the now and be aggressive in yeah, the now. When you're a senior at this point of the year, you know you don't have that much left. Yeah. Savor every moment. There's Cosgrove, and that will go for two for St. John's. Daniel Cosgrove, the senior from Holbrook, New York. Senior day is Sunday when UConn's three, actually four, seniors will be honored. That is a three from Ducharme. And, and so quick with the release. I love Ducharme. When she catches that ball, you knew that thing was going up. She gets herself ready before she catches the ball. 13 points for the freshman. Cosgrove again. No. And Mule will get the rebound. Season high points for the Huskies so far were way back in the opener in November against Arkansas when they put up 95. 84 on the board now. Mule for three. No. Nelson Adoto with the rebound. Second chance points. An opportunity for. Westbrook. She's trying to tell Nelson Adota to cut. Nelson Adota finds Ducharme behind the arc. That one a little bit short, but it goes to Westbrook, who feeds Ducharme. Knocked away. Huskies will have third chance point opportunities here. That pass is Aaron Westbrook saves to Nelson Adota right under the bucket. Westbrook at the right place at the right time. Time out. St. John's. Nine assists for Westbrook now. And getting some love from her team on the way to the bench. 
Avina Westbrook. Effort plus energy equals points. Well, Avina Westbrook has just been catching fire. In the last five games, she shot 50% or better. She was the game high scorer Wednesday night at Marquette. Look at the lines on the bottom there. Most games, assists, and steals by any Husky since the start of last season. And I think fair to say, playing her best basketball in February. Without a doubt. I mean, and, and she's, you know what, she's a leader. Aside from all the stuff on the court that she is really in a great groove right now, she is the, the, the heart and soul of this team as well. Shot from the corner for three goals for Sarah Zabrecki, sophomore from Indiana. As UConn's lead now 86 to 33. Piaf Gabriel into the ball game for UConn. Gets the feed from Nelson Adoda. Cut off. Get called for travel. Drag that right foot as she tried to stop and change directions. Some of the many different personnel combinations we saw this morning in practice uh, included, at one point, I think it was Gabriel, Juhas, and Nelson Adoda in the five at a time that were working. That's a very big lineup. It was, yes. There's the Brecky again from the corner. No, Mule pulls down the rebound. Side of seven minutes to go in this ball game. Gabriel sets the screen for Ducharm. And Nelson Adota to Gabriel, knocked away by Correa, but not to Nelson Adota. Ducharm to Gabriel, uh, and in. So two points on the board for the sophomore from Manchester, New Hampshire. Gabriel almost got that ball knocked away from Correa. Here's Clegg, stops. Gabriel was there with an outstretched hand. Zabrecki cut off. And will throw it away, and it'll be a turnover to UConn. And Zabrecki was open for that shot, but since she missed the, the first one, the previous one, I wondered if she didn't want to shoot it. Olivia Nelson Adota, one of those to be on your, honored on Senior Day on Sunday. And she gets toward the end of her UConn career. The last two games, she has been perfect from the floor. And I think it's fair to say this has been her best season as a Husky. Yeah, absolutely. And, and right now, her best stretch of games, she just has a different energy and look to her because she knows it's coming to an end. They're trying to feed Gabriel inside. Gets her own miss, but it doesn't get up before the time expires on the shot clock. By the way, Westbrook has not attempted a shot tonight. And you know, it's another, that's a great example of how you can impact the game and not score points. She, and Westbrook has had an outstanding impact on this game without taking a shot. Inside spin and a foul as Daniel Cosgrove goes up with it, gets fouled by Gabriel. Really nice move by the 6 4 Cosgrove. She feels the defense was a little bit on the high side. She spun around her. And nicely drew the foul. So Cosgrove will go to the free throw stripe, the transfer from Notre Dame. Misses that one, rebounded by Gabriel. By the way, great student section turnout tonight here in Hartford for the return of Paige Beckers. She was wide open down low, Nelson Adota. You got to get her the ball. She was calling for it. And to Gabriel, who will get fouled. That will be Cosgrove that will commit the foul. So this UConn team started the season as the second-ranked team in the country. All of the injuries and all of the things that have happened, they fell out of the top ten at one point. They come in here ranked seventh. Can they get to a 14th straight Final Four? You know, I think they can. If they continue to gel and everyone gets completely healthy, I, I think they can. As Gabriel scores a nice bucket down low. The bench jumps in unison, and Avita Westbrook gets her 10th assist on the night. And 
I just think the toughness and the, the mental fortitude that this team has and what they've earned over the course of this season makes them a much different and much better basketball team. I would, I would feel very safe in saying this. There's nobody wants to play them. Oh, no. Nobody wants to draw them, particularly in an early round. Now that they're almost completely healthy. And let's just give a nod, by the way, as Gabriel tosses one up, back iron. Let's give a nod to Aubrey Griffin before we forget that. It's great after the Big East Championship trophy was secured as Nelson Adota drives, gets fouled, and gets the bucket. Dorka Juhas was back getting stitched up. The Huskies brought out a cardboard stand-up of Juhas and Aubrey Griffin to be part of the team photo with the championship trophy. Yeah, Aubrey Griffin with, the, with you know, the, the back injury and she had surgery. She's out for the year and, and they, boy, boy, have they missed her this year. Yeah. And look forward to seeing Aubrey back with the team as Olivia Nelson Adota exits tonight to a nice round of applause. 13 points, five of six from the floor, four rebounds, four assists, no turnovers. So Amari DeBerry into the ball game for UConn. Every available player now has played in this one. There's Correa, quick release on that. Gabriel wrestles the rebound down and Westbrook comes to collect the ball. Of confusion. Gabriel sets the screen. Five on the shot clock. P.F. Gabriel spins, misses everything, and the rebound goes to Correa. But these are important minutes for Gabriel to just get more time playing in games. That's one thing in practice, right? Yeah, it's a completely different animal playing in a game. People is cut off by DeBerry, gets a hand on the ball and blocks it. Here's Drake. Intercepted by Deshaun. And she'll slow it down. Yeah, wisely didn't go for a layup. See if they can execute an offensive possession here. Huskies by 58. Two points away from matching their season high. Zabrecki intercepts the pass inbound for DeBerry. And Westbrook almost intercepted that. Here's Unique Drake for St. John's. Now Correa lets it go over to Sean and got it for three. Elani Correa with just her seventh point of the night. Someone who averages nearly 18 a game held in check by the Husky defense. Yeah, yet again, UConn took away the, op the opposing team's best scorer. The very three attempt was short, and that'll go out of bounds off of Patterson and be UConn's basketball. We're talking about some of the seniors as we look ahead to senior day on Sunday. How about Kristen Williams? Wrapping up her career, went over 1,700 career points last Sunday. One of just 17 players in the program to have done that. She's had an incredible career, and, and what I love about this kid is she always has a smile on her face. She's happy to be around. She just she loves being a part of this program, and she's changed her game, and she's become a really good defender because she knew that's what her team needed from her. Gabriel will get blocked. And that will go out of bounds. Uh, he asked Kristen Williams, okay, what's the difference in your senior year this year? She said, I'm in better shape. And I'm a better player for it. Yeah, it makes a difference. Shot clock at three. Gabriel, nuts to Barry, excuse me, off the front iron. The Huskies over their last four and in a two and a half minute scoring drought. As we get to the tail end of this one with now just over a minute to go. And St. John's with a tough road ahead. They will get on a plane after this one and fly to Milwaukee to take on Marquette on Sunday. Golden Eagles playing at Providence tonight. Let that shot off before the shot clock expire. Raven Peoples will miss the putback. And we're inside of a minute to go here in 
Hartford. Coming up, Gary Apple and Kara Walters with our complete postgame recap plus Jim Oriama's news conference. It's the UConn Women's Basketball postgame show presented by Geico. Coming up. And they're trying to get to bury a bucket here. Westbrook tried to feed it to Gabriel into too much traffic. So half a minute to go in this one. Meg, your takeaway on what we saw tonight in Paige Becker's return to the floor for UConn. You know, I think it's everything that, that Paige herself and her teammates would have liked to have seen. I mean, it was what they wanted, and they couldn't wait for her to come back, and it delivered. And as far as the overall UConn performance wrapped around that Paige return. It was outstanding. An outstanding effort. The crowd got a good show tonight. And give their squad a good round of applause for it. Beckers returns and winds up playing 12 minutes with eight points on the night. Leading scorer in the ball game was AZ Fudd with 19 with five Huskies in double figures on this one in our player of the game tonight, presented by Chick-fil-A Tri-State. Well, it's gotta be the fabulous freshman Fudd. She played outstanding basketball, Easy Fudd. She, you know, she, she scored from a standing position. She worked hard without the ball. She put it on the floor and, and she played it terrific defense as well. Yes, she did. So player of the game tonight is AZ Fudd. Huskies shot 63% from the floor tonight, 48% from three. And let's uh, get the head coach's thoughts post game with Maria Marino. Hey, coach, this may be the best your team has looked all season. Uh, do you agree? And are you peaking at the right time? Um, you know, it's um, everything looks great, you know, when every shot you take goes in. So. We shot the ball great today. Uh, our defense has been really, really good the last last couple of games, and um, you know it's the most players that we've had available. Uh, so we're able to keep people fresh. We're able to uh, go with a variety of different lineups. Uh, so as long as we stay working hard and stay unselfish, uh, you know we're playing our best basketball right now. What did your team learn in the absence of Paige Beckers and also others throughout the season? I think the, the idea of you can't really, um, you can't take anything for granted. You know, you can't worry about what you don't have. Uh, you know, as long as you have five players, you got to, you know, you, you got to be thinking how, how can we win this game? What do I have to do to get better? So, you know, everybody, I think, took it upon themselves to improve their game while Paige wasn't playing or, you know, while Caroline was out or while, you know, Kristen was out. And everybody missed games. I think Avina might be the only one that didn't miss a game this year. So all the other players, I think, worked really hard to get better. So you'd like to think that now because of that, you know, Paige is Paige and everybody else is a little bit better. How do you think Paige did overall in her first game back, and what do you want to see next game? You know, I thought I thought it was about what I thought it would be. You know, um, she did she did Paige things. You know, um, you know, we tried to get her 15 minutes, and I think we got close to that. And um, we'll see how she feels tomorrow, and uh, hopefully we can do the same thing and maybe a little bit more on Sunday. Coach, thanks, and thanks for everything this season. Thank you, guys. Now, thoughts of Gina Oriema after his squad wins by 55 tonight, runs its Big East record to 15 and 1, and 21 and 5 overall on the season, with just one game left on Sunday up at Gamble. This whole journey started back on November 14th in this building against Arkansas through all the ups and downs, the COVID stoppages, the injuries, the different lineup shuffles. What's your takeaway on where this team stands through all of it? You know what, they're a lot better today than they were in that Arkansas game. Uh, and it's because of the adversity that they endured. Uh, they're, they're mentally tougher, physically better. Um, I think emotionally, they're, they're definitely stronger. Uh, and they're a very close-knit team anyway. It's, it's a close group. They really get, they get along, they really like each other. 
And, uh, and that helps, especially when you go through all of the stuff that they went through. I mean, you can't even, like when you think back over, all, over the course of this year and what they went through, yeah. it's unimaginable. <laughs> what's, what's the song lyric? What a long, strange trip it's yeah, been. I mean, it, it but, has. Yeah, but they're better because of it all. And I think as they go forward, they are going to be a, a really tough opponent come yeah. March. And every goal that this team started the season with is still out there for them to get. Uh, just a quick thought, uh, as this is our last game of this season here on SNY, big huge thank you to Gino and the staff, the players, Anna Labonte, the sports information director, Neil Eskin, everybody at UConn for uh, being so helpful for us to bring these games to you, and we hope that you've enjoyed our SNY telecast this season. What a way to finish. Finish strong, is that the phrase? Finish big? <laughs> Just don't say break a leg to me. I'm sensitive about that. I've done that before. Huskies by 55 tonight in Hartford. More coming up.